Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today I want to teach you what these shapes have to do with prime numbers. But, oh man, this diagonal desk is really getting in the way. Maybe I should flip this sideways to clear some room. All right, that should be better. So, before I tell you what these shapes have to do with prime numbers, let me tell you what they have to do with clocks. If I had a 12 hour clock and set an alarm to go off every N hours for some whole number N, which numbers N would make an alarm eventually hit every possible time as a number? Well, if I went one hour, then one hour, then one hour, I would definitely end up hitting all the numbers. And same if I picked any number that was one more than a multiple of 12. Like if I went 13 hours, then 13 hours, then 13 hours, I would also hit them all. Or 25, or anything we could call congruent to one in mod 12. Basically meaning one more than a multiple of 12. And that's what's going on in that picture there. In this picture, I have 12 dots evenly spaced on the outside of a circle, and I've started on one at the top, we'll call zero, or if we want to think of it as like a clock, we could call it 12, and connected each dot to the one that's one clockwise from it. And that gives me a 12-sided regular polygon that ends up touching each of those 12 points. And it wouldn't only happen if I picked a number that was one away for each next dot, I could have said I'm connecting them to the one 13 away or the ones 25 away and we would have gotten the same picture. So we could say that these are the connections that are congruent to, like the modular equals one in this mod 12. But it also would be the same picture we'd get drawn in reverse if I had added a number that was one less than a multiple of 12. Like if this was my noon on a clock and I ticked forward 11 hours or connected this dot to the one that was 11 ticks clockwise, it would get connected there, then there, then there, and draw this shape in reverse. Same with any other number like 11 that's congruent to 11 in mod 12. So this picture represents numbers that are congruent to either 1 or 11 in this mod 12 system, and we'll notice it touches all the corners. But what if I had been jumping two hours at a time instead? So if I had an alarm ring every two hours, or had 12 dots on a circle and connected each to the one that was two clockwise from it, I would get a regular hexagon. And it wouldn't have vertices on all of those dots, it would miss some of them. Like if I started at an even hour and went for two hours at a time, I would only hit evens. And if I started at an odd hour instead, I would have only hit odds. So we could see that numbers that are congruent to two in mod 12, meaning anything that's two more than a multiple of 12, would draw this shape that way. And numbers that are congruent to 10 in mod 12, 10 ticks clockwise or 10 hours forward, would draw this shape in reverse, but not touch every single possible hour. Similarly, if I was connecting dots to ones three away in either direction, meaning I could go three ticks forward or nine ticks forward to make me paint it backwards, any number congruent to three or nine in mod 12 would draw a square-like shape and only hit four total times or dots on the outside. And if I went four hours at a time, or the number that's 12 minus four, eight, anything congruent to four or eight in mod 12 would just generate this triangle hitting three different times. And all the way over here, ones congruent to six in mod 12 are just gonna draw a line. And if I had done ones congruent to 12 in mod 12, they would just have a single point that got hit. But if I make ones congruent to five, by adding five hours at a time, or by the number that's 12 minus five, 
seven, which would paint this in the other direction, I end up hitting all 12 hours or points on the outside of the circle. So any amount of time I set for my alarm that was one more, 11 more, five more or seven more than a multiple of 12 would be the times that hit every hour at some point. Now, what's special about these numbers in relationship to 12? These numbers, one, five, seven, and 11, are the integers smaller than 12 that are co-prime to 12. Now, numbers being co-prime to something means that they have no factors in common with it greater than one. Like the numbers six and eight aren't primes and they're also not co-prime to each other because they have a factor of two in common. Whereas the numbers 15 and 16, although neither of them is a prime number, they're divisible by things, they are co-prime to each other because 16 is just made up of twos and 15 is made up of three times five. So they don't have any factors in common greater than one. And if we look at all the numbers smaller than 12 to see which ones have some factor in common with it, we'll notice these are the only four that don't, the only four that are co-prime to it. If I look at a stretch of the number line interpreted in mod 12 and starting at at least 12, where I'm at some multiple of 12, 12 or higher, and the next numbers that could be called congruent to something between one and 11 in that mod, before we hit the next multiple of 12 that's congruent to zero again, well, which spots here could be where prime numbers lived? Well, the multiple of 12 itself obviously won't be prime, and anything two more than than a multiple of 12 would have to also be even like the multiple of 12 was. And anything three more than a multiple of 12 would have to also be three even like the multiple of 12 was. And once we've eliminated those possibilities from being primes, we're left with the numbers that didn't have any factors in common with 12 greater than one. 1, 5, 7, and 11, meaning that every prime number greater than 12 has to be exactly 1, 5, 7, or 11 more than a multiple of 12. And also meaning that if we count it in a base 12 number system, all multi-digit primes would end in one of these digits. And yeah, that would be a single digit character in the base 12 system. So if this tells us about primes in a potential base 12 way of counting, how could we use something like this to learn about what primes must end in in our base 10 system? Well, let me draw some more shapes. Here I have tons of shapes, including the ones I generated from 12 dots on a circle earlier, plus some simpler variations where I pick a given mod number, imagine that many dots equidistantly spread on an invisible circle, and starting from one of those dots, hop to new dots that are a certain distance away. Like if I pick any number congruent to zero in mod three and hop across the three dot circle, I'm gonna stay on the same dot. But if I pick a number congruent to one or two in that mod and have that be the amount I hop, I'll touch all three of the dots as corners of this triangle because one and two are co-prime to three. But if I imagine mod four with four dots on a circle, not only do the numbers congruent to zero stay on one dot, but the numbers congruent to two only bounce in a line between two of the four dots, whereas a number congruent to one or three would visit all four of the dots in a sort of square going one way or another. Because one and three are co-prime to four, but two isn't. We'll notice that the numbers that are co-prime to the mod are the ones that touch every dot. Now in mod five, although numbers congruent to zero would only visit a single dot, numbers congruent to one or four in that mod visit all five dots in a sort of pentagon shape, and numbers congruent to two or three also visit all five just in a sort of star shape. And that's because one, four, two, or three 
are all co-prime to five. So we get to visit all the dots when using one of those. And that will be similar with other prime mods like seven or 11, which I didn't draw them for because they were already getting sloppy, where apart from numbers congruent to zero in that mod, all the other options, although the shapes will look different, will visit all of the dots once because all the numbers bigger than zero will be co-prime to the mod that's prime itself. But if I imagine six dots around a circle, the only numbers that would visit all of them once would be one and five, because those are the only numbers co-prime to six and smaller than it. Whereas something like two hops or four hops would only paint out a triangle of dots among the six. And in fact, the same type of triangle we got if we went one or two hops in mod three. And we'll see that triangle whenever the mod compared to the hopping amount simplifies like a fraction. Two sixths is the same as one third or four sixths is the same as two thirds. And we'll of course also see the triangle then on places like three or six in mod nine or four or eight in mod 12 or any others that would simplify down to that one or two in mod three shape. Now in mod 10, what a number is congruent to is just the last digit in the way we write it in our base 10 system. So if I had 10 dots on a circle and opt any amount that ended in zero as my jumping amount, I would stay in one place. Hopped any amount that ended in a one or nine digit, I would paint out this regular decagon and touch all the corners. If I hopped a number ending in three or seven, I would also touch all the corners in a more spiky way because one, three, seven, and nine are the numbers smaller than 10 co-prime do it. So the other cases won't touch all of the corners and something like two or eight hops or any number ending in the digit two or eight as our hopping number would just touch five points, painting out a pentagon sort of like the one or four hop ones did in mod five. And here again on a four or six hop on our 10 dot one, we get the same shape as two or three hops on five total. So overall, we can see a lot of cool patterns here regardless of what mod we're in. Like any number congruent to zero in a mod will only touch a single thing. If our mod's even and we make something congruent to half of that, will just bounce between two things in a line. If we go to something congruent to one over or one under our mod number, we'll make a regular polygon and touch all the corners. And if the mod's a prime, then all of the other non-zero possibilities will touch every corner due to them all being co-prime. Whereas if the mod has some divisibility to it, some of the shapes we'll see will simplify down to shapes that we've seen before. So similar to how a stretch of number line in mod 12 could show us that all primes greater than 12 have to be either one, five, seven, or 11 greater than a multiple of 12, the numbers co-prime to it and smaller than it, well, the same will hold true in other systems as well, like our base 10 way of writing numbers. So if we wanna know what a prime number can end in for its last digit, well, any prime number greater than 10 will have to end in the digit one, three, seven, or nine, the numbers co-prime to 10 and smaller than it, and the only ones of these shapes that touched every corner in their path. So what if we wanted to use these patterns to find where primes could or couldn't live? Well, in our base 10 system, you may already recognize that a multi-digit prime can't end in a zero, two, four, five, six, or eight. It has to end in one, three, seven, or nine. But is that the best ratio we could get if we were prime hunting? Well, if we were looking in something like mod or base seven, primes could end in tons of different digits possibly, anything apart from the digit zero. So that wouldn't be very efficient to prime hunt in. We would have tons of possibilities to look through. But if I was in base six, 
If I was looking for any prime number greater than six, I would only have to check through the ones that ended in the digits one or five one-third of the possible last digits in that base. And so one-third there is a better ratio as a prime hunter than we get in base 10, where four-tenths or two-fifths of the last digits could possibly be primes. You can notice that base six or 12 are the two here that have the most efficient or best rate of where you'd have to look for primes because they have just one third of the possible last digits be spots that a multi-digit prime could live compared to two fifths of the spots like an R base. All right. So I do wish we counted in a numerical base with a smaller proportion of co-prime numbers to it, like base six or base 12, where it would be a lot easier to hunt for where prime numbers could or couldn't exist. But even stuck in our base 10 world, it's pretty cool that by talking about modular arithmetic or drawing these interesting shapes. Oh, ow. Okay, that kind of hurt my leg. I didn't realize it would collapse that much. But in any case, thank you for joining me here in combo class. Stay safe and I'll catch you next lesson.